and begin. So didn't quite finish up that last section, um, but we left it in a pretty natural place because the vast definition of the previous section feeds directly in to this section. And this is the definition of conjugate matrices. And when this definition first goes up, it's maybe not going to look like much, but with the understanding that we are looking at square matrices here. Two matrices A and B are conjugate if there is a third matrix C such that A equals C times B times C inverse. You sometimes see the inverse uh, swapped around. I mean, you sometimes see conjugacy defined as that. It really doesn't matter where the inverse goes. Um, these definitions are equivalent. And, and the reason for that is that um, C, you can think of C as C inverse inverse. And if you think of C in those terms, you have conjugacy of this second form. So that's what conjugacy is. And as I say, I mean, when you just look at this definition, it's not obvious why two conjugate matrices would have the same properties. But we'll state without proof, I think, but we'll state a major theorem to Conjugate matrices have the same eigenvalues. So if A and B are conjugate, the eigenvalues of A and B are the same. And not only are the eigenvalues the same, they have the same multiplicity. And if you're thinking that I never defined the multiplicity of an eigenvalue, you are correct. But I have made the observation that eigenvalues are roots of polynomials. And we've certainly seen multiplicity in that context. The multiplicity is when you factor the polynomial 
some of the multiplicity is whatever power you have next to the factor. So we have this theorem and it leads very naturally, as I say, into the next definition and the next section. Definition. Uh, once again, the square matrix A has been diagonalized if A can be written as a matrix times D times the inverse of this matrix where D is a diagonal matrix. And I'm not sure if I've ever explicitly defined a diagonal matrix. It's a matrix with um, numbers down the main diagonal, perhaps non-zero numbers, but everything else is zero. So that's diagonalization. I make the observation, we made this observation already, that if we have a triangular matrix, the numbers on the diagonal are the eigenvalues of the matrix. So certainly a diagonal matrix is triangular. You could define it to be both upper and lower triangular. So the, the numbers that appear on the diagonal of D are the eigenvalues of D, but there are also the eigenvalues of A, because of course A and D are conjugate. I want to go on a brief, not, how should I put this? It's not exactly a digression. I want to give a brief talk about diagonalization in the classroom versus diagonalization outside the classroom. In the classroom, You start with A, you find the eigenvalues, and then you use these eigenvalues to diagonalize We haven't yet given that process, but we will in like five minutes. I think, I mean, I understand the logic in doing this. It gives students a good opportunity to mess around with diagonalizations without using a computer algebra system. But the sort of the downside of this is that it's almost the opposite 
of how diagonalizations tend to be used in the real world. In the real world, you tend to diagonalize first using some numerical computer algorithm. So you find an approximate diagonalization using some kind of algorithm. And once you've diagonalized the matrix, you can read off the eigenvalues of the matrix. So in the classroom, diagonalization is something you do with the algorithms. Frequently in the real world, diagonalization is something you do to find the eigenvalues. It's almost, as I say, almost exactly reversed. So with that, uh, that observation made, we are in a classroom. And let's ask some questions. The first question, maybe it wouldn't occur to us to ask, but it's important. Can every square matrix be diagonalized? And I won't keep you in suspense. The answer to that question is going to be a no. Then the second question, how can we diagonalize a matrix. And in spite of the order that I put these in, um, the second question answers the first question. Once we know how to diagonalize the matrix, we'll see how that method could fail. And I mean, in general, If we're doing this sort of by hand classroom version of diagonalization, we're going to need to find the eigenvalues because the eigenvalues are going to be the numbers on the diagonal of D. It would be quite unusual if we had a situation where we only needed the eigenvalues. And that is not the situation here. We need eigenvalues and we need eigenvectors. And that's because When we create our diagonalization, 
the columns of this matrix P are eigenvectors. So how could this process fail? I've claimed that not every matrix is diagonalizable, but what would stop you from creating this matrix P? Well, here, the invertible matrix theorem comes into play. I've said before, and we keep seeing it to be true, that even if we don't really want to find inverses, the mere existence of inverses is important. In particular, According to the invertible matrix theorem, if P is going to be invertible, its columns need to be linearly independent. So it's not enough to have eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we need linearly independent eigenvectors. And this is where things can run into trouble. Let's do some diagonalizations. Um, now that we have this frame here, we see that doing diagonalizations isn't really anything special. We need to find the eigenvalues of A. Then for those eigenvalues, we need to find eigenvectors. The actual diagonalization part is just taking those eigenvectors and sticking them next to each other into a matrix. Let's make life easy for ourselves. And let's look at the following matrix, 581, 0, 0, 7, 0, 0, negative 2. And why do I say this choice of A makes life easy for us? Well, we need eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And ordinarily, finding the eigenvalues of a three by three matrix is not going to be a love the experience. You subtract lambdas down the diagonal, you compute a determinant, you set a cubic polynomial equal to zero, and then you've never memorized the cubic polynomial form to the, because why would you? So you probably have to go to a computer to actually find the roots. Well, A is upper triangle meaning that the eigenvalues of A are just the um, numbers on the diagonal. So we've made life easier for us in that sense, that we can just read these off. At this point, we know that A is going to be diagonalizable. Um, because what do we need to create P? We need linearly independent vectors, eigenvectors. And we need three of them. Why three? Well, just because if P 
times A times P inverse is going to be defined if A is three by three, then P also has to be three by three. So three columns, each of them needs to be a linear, the independent eigenvector. And we presented a theorem in class Tuesday that says that if you have a list of different eigenvalues and for each of these eigenvalues, we find an eigenvector. That set of eigenvectors is linearly independent. So we are going to have three linearly independent eigenvectors, one from each eigenvalue. All that remains is actually finding the things. And finding the things isn't hard per se, it's, it's kind of tedious because you have to go to your calculator and mess around on there. But we've got this matrix. We've got an eigenvalue, call this matrix A. So to find the eigenvectors, A minus lambda I times V equals zero. And this is something we're just going to do on our calculator. Um, your life is going to be much easier and you're going to spend much less time on these problems if you do not have to write out what 5i is and do the subtraction pen and paper every time. What we should try to remember is that 5i is going to just put this number 5 on the diagonal, or rather it's going to put negative 5 on the diagonal because of the subtraction. We're setting all of this equal to zero. Come go to our calculator. Let's try that again. Let's see, get out of get out of here. Go to the matrix, edit. We're looking at a three by four matrix. Let me see, zero, eight, one, zero, zero, negative five, seven, zero, 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 negative seven, zero. Perform, let's go to the matrix menu, go over to math, find RREF, and 
Okay, this is a weird looking thing, but we just have to remember what this tells us. If we call our variables X, Y, and Z, this first row says Y equals zero. This next row says Z equals zero. The last row says that zero equals zero, which is not a useful piece of information. So we're told that y equals zero and z equals zero. And I mean, from this, we can, we can very easily create a, matrix, a vector that satisfies this equality. Like one, zero, zero is the first that comes to mind, but we could have anything in that first entry except for zero. Let's remind ourselves once again that the zero vector can never be an eigenvector. And I just chose one because one's the simplest non-zero number. So let's build as we go. We need P and we need a D. And this is probably pretty natural for you, but let's say this explicitly. The columns of P and the columns of D need to match. So remember what D looks like. It is a diagonal matrix. The first column of P is that eigenvector we just found, one is zero, zero. And that eigenvector came from the eigenvalue of five. So as far as um, D is just going to be a diagonal matrix that has the eigenvalues down the diagonal. Just make sure again that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors match. First column of P comes from the first column of D. There really no can bolt select. I don't know any way of bulk erasing. It seems like there must be, but let's uh, let's do this the slow way. So the next eigenvalue we'll look at is zero. The zero vector cannot be an eigenvector, but the number zero can be an eigenvalue. We look at a minus lambda i times v equals zero. Of course, zero times any matrix 
is the zero matrix, and we end up with this equation. A times V equals zero. Go back to our calculator. Go back to A. Let's see, five, zero, negative two. That should do it. We'll quit out. We'll do this. And we get a slightly more normal looking answer. So X equals negative eight fifths Y. That is to say one X plus eight fifths Y equals zero. So X is negative eight fifths Y. Z equals zero. Um, and we're looking for a vector that satisfies these conditions. And of course, there are an infinite number of vectors that satisfy these conditions. I would, I would probably choose one that doesn't give me any fractions by personal preference. If we let y be negative five, then x must be positive eight. We get eight, negative five, zero. This then is our second eigenvector and our second column of P. And the second column of P came from that zero eigenvector. That leaves us with negative two. Sorry, I realize I'm, even as I do this, I realize I'm sort of just, okay, these are how we, these are how we find eigenvectors. We did like one example of this. So maybe I'm going a little fast. Is everybody okay with these eigenvector count? Yes, okay. Then A minus lambda I, now lambda is negative two. So a plus two i times v equals zero. Let's see, where are we? Here we go. Matrix edit A. So this time we want plus two. That will give us a seven there and a two there and a zero there. And because I converted to fractions, I cannot use that entry command back to the matrix menu. Find RREF, plug in A, oof. Convert that very ugly looking decimal to a fraction. 
I'm from, I'm gonna write this down. I'm not gonna try to remember this. X equals 27 over seven times Z. Y equals negative seven over two times Z. And now we want to find an eigenvector. And any value of z except for zero would give us an eigenvector. But maybe we can select there's no value of z that will make this really nice. But if we at least picked 14, we could avoid having fractions. Um, 14 divided by two is seven times negative seven. If Z is 14, Y is negative 49. Um, 14 divided by seven is two, 27 times two. I make that 54. So 54, negative 49, 14. And this comes from the eigenvalue, negative two. And we claim that we have diagonalized A. We haven't found P inverse, but you know, if you absolutely needed that, you could tell your calculator to do it. Let's see. Let's check our work. So, Clear, matrix edit. I guess we don't go down to P, so we'll just use A again. A is three by three. Let me see the first column. The first column was one zero zero. The second column was eight negative five zero. And the third column was some kind of ugly thing. Yeah, can someone just do 54, negative 49 and 14. 54, negative 49, 14. So let's get D in here was five, zero, negative two. And let's see if this works into the matrix menu. We're calling our PA. times D times P inverse. 
and 581007, 002. This is indeed the matrix we started out. So everything went fine and we did diagonalize this thing. Let's look at some more examples, but I'm going to, to cheat a little bit because it would be extremely tedious to go through this entire process like repeatedly. For my second example, I'm going to look at one, three, three, negative three, negative five, negative three, 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 one. Lots of things make this example kind of unappealing. Um, what I am going to do is to find these eigenvalues using a computer algebra system instead of messing around with characteristic with third degree characteristic polynomials in particular, this is the computer algebra system of Wolfram Alpha eigenvalues, and then the matrix goes in curly brackets, and the rows go in curly brackets, one, three, three, comma, negative three, negative five, negative three, comma, three, three, one. And it lists three eigenvalues, but there are really only two. You'll observe that negative two is listed twice. And that's because Wolfram Alpha is listing eigenvalues with their multiplicities, with their multiplicities as roots of the characteristic polynomial. So negative two and one. And now we'll proceed as before. Um, notice that there is now no obvious guarantee that this matrix is diagonalizable. Um, be what our theorem says is that we're going to get linearly independent eigenvectors from these eigenvalues, but having two linearly independent eigenvectors isn't good enough. We need three. So it's not fear going into this problem, whether a diagonalization exists. Let's go over here. Let's copy down this matrix.
Let's look at the eigenvalues. Negative two, we'll start with. And we are there for looking at a plus two i times v equals zero. And this is then something we'll do in our computer or in our calculator. So we need a three by four augmented matrix. Then A, let me just put in A as it was. Negative three, negative five, negative three, 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 one. But this is A. We want A plus two I. That will put twos on the diagonal. So three, negative three. Three. Matrix mass produced row echelon form A. Okay, so what's this say? This says that X plus Y plus Z equals zero. Um, and there are, we can definitely get eigenvectors from this, um, one, negative, one, zero. If possible, we'd like to get two eigenvectors from this. And the reason I say that is that we know that getting one eigenvector from each eigenvalue isn't enough. We need three eigenvectors. So one of these eigenvalues needs to be giving us more than one eigenvector. It's maybe not immediately obvious whether this Equality lends itself to giving us multiple linearly independent eigenvectors. That linearly independent is the real thing. It's very easy one, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one. Those are two eigenvectors. Are they linearly independent? The easiest way to approach this might be to use that parametric form. Get the free variables over to the right. Buffer in. everything that's missing. If you do this, you're going to get a vector and another vector. And those vectors are guaranteed to be eigenvectors and they're guaranteed to be linearly independent. So we got 
to linear the independent eigenvectors from this one eigenvalue. This can be one row of P, one column of P, sorry. That can be a second column of P. What about D? D has the eigenvalues down the diagonal. There are only two eigenvalues, but one of those eigenvalues has given us two columns. And we're going to put the eigenvalue that gave us the first column in the first column. And we're going to give the, put the eigenvalue that gave us the second column in the second column. So D is going to have repetition in it. The same eigenvalue is going to appear twice. As for our last eigenvalue, well, it's one. So we're going to need an eigenvector from that. We only need one eigenvector now. Let's see. So go here. Matrix edit A. So let's see. We're subtracting one down the diagonal. So the diagonal becomes this. Let's see, and now we do this again. And we get some more complicated looking thing. X equals Z. Y equals negative Z. And we could get an eigenvalue from this. Z equals one gives us one, negative one, one. Um, if we buffer this in. Notice that unlike the previous case, we're only getting one vector here. We're getting Z times one, negative one, one. So we can only get one linear, the independent eigenvector from this. Fortunately, that's all we needed. We needed to fill in that last column, which we can now do. And there's our diagonalization. Uh, minus the P inverse 
in a lot of applications of diagonalization, you do not need to know a P inverse, which is why this is not um, contradicting what I've said about not finding inverses. Also, also going way back, the numerical algorithm that we use to diagonalize um, approximates P, it approximates D, and it approximates P inverse as three different things. So the numerical algorithm doesn't find P and then take its inverse. It finds P and P inverse separately. So again, we are not violating our suggestion that it's bad to find inverses, even though this inverse does appear in the diagonalization. Um, I've said that the diagonalization can fail. So I guess, or, I mean, I didn't phrase it quite like that. I said that not every matrix can be diagonalized, but it amounts to the same thing. Let's go uh, find these eigenvalues. Once again, not doing this by hand. Negative two and one. And here, let's just, we've done two examples. Let's just look at Wolfram Alpha. Negative two, we see one eigenvector. One, we see one eigenvector. Um, each of these eigenvalues only gives you one linearly independent eigenvector. You do not have enough eigenvectors to create P. So because we only can create two linearly independent eigenvectors, this matrix is not diagonalizable. Compare that to here, where if I just scroll down a little more, we see a three linear the independent eigenvectors. So it's just a question of whether you have enough eigenvectors. And if you have a full set of eigenvalues, so if you have three eigenvalues, you definitely will. This can only happen if, if you have fewer than n eigenvalues for an n by n matrix. Can I give anything approaching an application of this? I mean, I've already given one application, which is that outside of the classroom, this is often used as a part of an eigenvalue finding algorithm. Another application that can be stated without any real background is that the diagonalization is useful for computing 
powers. And this is because if you have a diagonalized matrix raised to a power, it leaves the P and the P inverse completely alone and only raises the D to the power. And we can, we can see this. If we have PDP inverse squared, that's P D P inverse times P D P inverse. The P inverse times P cancels. We have P times D squared times P inverse. And who, what does that matter? Well, in general, raising matrices to large powers, even very small matrices, is computationally very intensive. Right, let's go to our computer calculator. I keep calling it a computer. And let's go and define a two by two matrix, 0.7, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.44, 0.45, 0.46, 0.47, 0.48, 0.49, 0.50, 0.51, 0.52, 0.53, 0.54, 0.55, 0.56, 0.57, 0.58, 0.59, 0.60, 0.61, 0.62, 0.63, 0.64, 0.65, 0.66, 0.67, 0.68, 0.69, 0.70, 0.71, 0.72, 0.73, 0.74, 0.75, 0.76, 0.77, 0.78, 0.79, 0.80, 0.81, 0.82, 0.83, 0.84, 0.85, 0.86, 0.87, 0.88, 0.89, 0.90, 0.91, 0.92, 0.93, 0.94, 0.95, 0.96, 0.97, 0.98, 0.99, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30,
what are the applications of matrix powers? And I can answer that question. I can give very concrete real world applications of these powers to probability. Yeah. And that is what we are going to do Tuesday next week, or it's what we're going to start Tuesday next week. It will probably take two class periods to do. Thursday next week, again, is the test. I'll get you some kind of review to look at.